Yeah, man, I had, um, well, I had, okay, uh, women cover their heads, men uncover their heads, we're gonna stand and face Jerusalem, open up. Our Father, which are in heaven. Our Father, which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. The glory forever. forever. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. For He is good. For He is good. And his mercy endures forever. And His mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. And one true God. And there is no other. And there is no other. Amen. Amen. Now we want to read um the uh, scripture reading was coming from uh, Psalms 49. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. Psalms 49, verses 1 through 5, and it reads, Hear this, all ye people. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark state upon the heart. Wherefore should I fear in thy days of evil, when the iniquity of my heel shall compass me about? I'll read for you Psalms 49, verses 1 through 5. May the Lord bless you the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh oh. All right. Bless Sabbath, everybody. Bless Sabbath. Bless Sabbath. All right. All right. So, so I see we all made it through the week. Uh, you know, and that's why the Lord gives. Uh, Holy Sabbath, the week at uh, time. Thank God for that. <clears throat> Today's lesson is dealing with the Old and the New Testament because we see that you know, doctrine, a lot of uh, different denominations, churches, and stuff like that. They tell us that the Old Testament is not needed. They tell us that we can do away with it. But one thing we must understand is that the Old Testament is in the Bible for a reason. When you do away with the Old Testament, you're doing away with Jesus. Because the brothers, the apostles in the New Testament, they was teaching Old Testament scriptures. They had nothing else to teach. And that's one thing we Because the New Testament is just a testimony of the Old Testament. That's all it is. Paul and, and, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all those guys, they didn't come with the new doctrine. They were teaching the Old Testament scriptures. Even Jesus. Jesus didn't come with some new fancy doctrine. No, he was teaching the things that was written of him. In the Old Testament. So we're going to see. Let's open up... Uh, this is not on the handout, but let's see who the Lord gave his secrets to. Let's go to the book of Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. We're going to start out in the Old Testament. <clears throat> Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. My brother, when you get that, you go ahead and read it. Surely the Lord, God, would do nothing but... He revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Surely the Lord would do nothing but he revealed his secret to his servants, the prophets. So who are the prophets? The prophets are the brothers in the Old Testament. The Lord revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Right? Those are the prophets, right? So 
let's let's uh let's go down to uh John chapter five. John chapter five and thirty nine. Five and verse thirty-nine. Let me get down. All right, thank you. That is John chapter five and verse thirty-nine. Let me get the. Because Jesus is telling us to do something, right? But go ahead. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. Search the scriptures. It says, search the scriptures. Now, this is in the red writing. This is Jesus talking. And Jesus is telling us to search the scriptures. What scriptures? Because the only scriptures that they had to search back in Jesus' time was the Old Testament. But go ahead. Search the scriptures what? For in them you think you have eternal life. Uh-huh. And they are they which testify of me. It says, they are they that testify of me. So you cannot do away with the Old Testament because they testify of Jesus Christ. When you do away with the Old Testament, you're doing away with Jesus. Let's go to Acts chapter 17. I'll show you something. Acts, the book of Acts chapter 17. And we're going to bring it down to verse 11. And when you get that, my brother, go ahead and read it. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica uh -huh. in that they received the word with mm -hmm. all readiness of mind uh -huh. and searched the scriptures daily. They searched the scriptures daily. They was following what Jesus said. Go ahead. Whether those things were so. Whether those things were so. And that's what we have to do. We have to search the scriptures daily. Right? So we can get some understanding. Now let's get into this class now. Uh, the, the New Testimony of the Old. We're going to bring it down to Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Because everything that we need to know was already foretold in the Old Testament. The New Testament just testifies of the Old Testament. We can't do away with it. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. And when you get there, my bro, go ahead and read it. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So the Bible says to the law and to the testimony. He, he, what he's talking about is the old and the new. The law is the Old Testament, and the testimony is, is the New Testament. So we see right off the bat that the New Testament is being foretold in the Old Testament. It says, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So if you have a pastor or a, 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 a deacon or a reverend or a bishop, somebody tell, uh, saying that, you know, we can do it with the Old Testament. Deal with the New Testament, the Bible says there is no truth in them. I'm going to read it one more time. It says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So you can't just call yourself a New Testament Christian. Because the Bible says you don't have no truth in you. Now let's go to Second Peter. Now let's go back to the New Testament. In this class, I'm just going to show you Old and New Testament, they go hand in hand. They coincide with each other. The brothers and the, the apostles in the New Testament wasn't teaching nothing different from the prophets in the Old Testament. It's all the same thing. Uh, Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter three. Get the Second Peter, chapter three. And uh, just two verses, verse one and two. Let me get that real quick. Go ahead, my bro. The second epistle, uh -huh. beloved, 
I now write unto you, mm -hmm. in both which I stir up your pure mind mm -hmm. in the way of remembrance. So Peter is telling us to remember something. He's saying, this second epistle, beloved, now, now, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. He's telling us to keep in mind and remember something. Go ahead. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. So that 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 ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets. Who are the holy prophets? The Old Testament. So Peter is, is telling us to remember and be mindful of the words spoken of in the Old Testament by the Holy Prophets. He tells us it's the New Testament. Go ahead. Keep reading. And of the commandment of uh -huh. us, uh -huh. the apostles of the Lord and Savior. That's right. So what I'm showing you is Peter is telling us to remember and be mindful of the things that was spoken of and written of in the Old Testament. So we cannot do away with it. Let's, let's look at Jesus. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. They love to try to do away with the Old Testament. Matthew chapter 5. Let's look at Jesus and see what Jesus said because, you know, the, the Pharisees was always trying to look for a way to, to trip Jesus up so they could kill him. And they was acting like Jesus was preaching something different. But Jesus is going to tell you what he was preaching. He's going to tell you what he ain't uh, come to do away with. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. And when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So Jesus is saying, think not that I come. Think not that I come to do to destroy the law. Or what? Or the prophets. So he's saying, I did not come to do away with the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament is the law and the prophets. So Jesus, out of his mouth, is saying, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. But go ahead. I am not come to destroy. But what? But to fulfill. He said, I am not come to destroy. But I come to fulfill. But keep reading. For verily I say unto you, uh -huh. till heaven and earth pass, Go ahead. one jot mm -hmm. or one tittle uh -huh. shall in no wise pass from the law. So he said, for, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. So basically what he's saying is, <clears throat> as long as there's heaven and earth, still out here like we're standing on earth we're on planet earth right now heaven and earth hasn't paid you go outside you can look in the heavens that hasn't passed yet that means the law is still in effect until heaven and earth pass then hey look it'll be fulfilled but go ahead whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments uh -huh. and shall teach me and so so we're talking about them pastors or teachers who are teaching men that they can break the commandments who are teaching us that we don't have to keep the laws in the old testament it says, whoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men what? He shall be called the least in the kingdom. The Bible of God. say he's going to be called least in the kingdom. And by the way, it's not saying that he's going to still get in the kingdom, but he's just going to be on the bottom. Well, let's just keep reading. Go ahead. But whosoever shall do and teach them, uh -huh. the same shall be called great in the kingdom. And that's of God. what we're doing. We're teaching that, that the Bible that the Old Testament is still in effect. We teach them to keep God's commandments. We teach to keep the Sabbath day holy. That's a commandment. That's the fourth commandment. We teach you to keep the dietary law. We keep we teach you to keep the feet against anything that's in the Old Testament. But keep reading, my bro. For I say unto you mm -hmm. that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Now he's talking about righteousness though. When we talking about least Yes, go ahead. You shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right. So if we teach men not to keep the commandments, that is unrighteousness. And the Bible says, says, For I say to you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you got a pastor or a teacher, some kind of teacher, Reverend Bishop, uh uh, 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 uh Peter Popoff, who, who uh Anybody, so if you got anybody like that that's teaching you against the commandments of God, I would say they won't enter into the kingdom because it is unrighteousness. We just don't keep it it's simple. Let's look at Jesus. 
Give us some more Jesus. Let's get up verse 21. Okay, go ahead to verse 21. Go ahead and read my brother. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. My old testament, go ahead. Thou shalt not kill. But uh, that's the law. Go ahead. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. So what you think if you was to break any of the because James you break one, you break them all, right? So if you're teaching to go against the commandments and to go against God in the old testament, then you in danger of the judgment. But can you read my wait, wait, uh what well, I said on that? Let's look at Jesus. Let's go to uh Luke chapter four. And this is, you know, one of these one of these classes where it's it's really simple. Uh, all you have to do is just do some reading. You have to do your due diligence and open your Bibles and read it, not just take what what, what somebody said. You know, hey, I suggest for those out there listening to follow along, and you'll see. We just reading the Bible. Uh, Luke chapter four. Bring it down to verse. Four. Brother, go ahead and read it. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Uh huh. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Right, because Jesus was casting out demons, doing all types of miracles, and he became famous. It says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit uh, into Galilee, where he went out, where were there, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. Go ahead. And he taught in their synagogues. Being glorified of all, uh huh. <clears throat> and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, uh huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. And his custom was uh -huh. he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So we see Jesus even keeping the Sabbath, right? Laws of the Old Testament. It says uh, fifteen, and he taught in their synagogue. So Jesus was was teaching, right? Being glorified of all, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and his and and, at, and as his custom was, it's something, you know, your, your custom is what you do, right? As, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. So we see Jesus keeping the commandments. Jesus keeping the commandments. And he was teaching on the Sabbath. He was in church teaching. Like today is the Sabbath day. It's not Sunday. It's today. Now, granted, we are, we are not seven day adventures i must put that out there no we're not seven day adventists we just keep the holy commandments of god okay but keep reading my brother what was what in church on the sabbath go ahead and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet isaiah which is who? isaiah so jesus was reading on the sabbath day in church the book of isaiah jesus was reading the old testament scriptures because that was all there was to read but go ahead, my brother. And when he had opened the book, uh -huh. he found the place where it is was written. Uh -huh. What was he reading? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he reading about himself. Jesus reading about Jesus. But I'm going to show you that. But keep reading. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, uh -huh. he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, uh -huh. to preach deliverance to the captive, uh -huh. and recovering of sight to the blind, go ahead. to set at liberty them that are viewed. Uh huh. <clears throat> to preach the acceptable of the Lord. And what, and what he did after he read that? And he closed the book. Uh huh. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. Okay, now we're going to look, we're going to go back and see what Jesus was reading. Because it said, Jesus was reading, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the, bro the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, of uh, uh, and recovering of the sight to the blind, and to set liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now let's go back and see where Jesus got that from. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 61. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue uh -huh. were fastened on him. Mm -hmm. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. So Jesus was out fulfilling prophecy. Now let's look at what he was reading though. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 61. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Because Jesus was reading the Old Testament scriptures. Isaiah chapter 61 is what he was reading. And when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And don't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Uh -huh. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Uh huh. And what? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh huh. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort okay, all the born. Okay, stop. All right, stop. So he said. So what he did was he read all of verse one and half of verse two, right? Because he, uh, uh, okay, so the half of verse two he read was to pro to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and close the best when he closed the book because the rest says the day of vengeance of our God to com comfort all that more. He didn't come to do that just yet. That's why he closed the book. And let's go back to Luke chapter four. He didn't come to bring vengeance yet. That's why he closed the book and handed it back to him. Luke chapter 4. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Read, uh, so after he read Isaiah, read verse uh, 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 20 again. And he closed the book. So he closed it up. Go ahead. And he gave it again to the minister and uh -huh. sat down. Uh -huh. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Mm -hmm. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. So he fulfilled this part of the scripture right then and there, right in front of their faces. They should be lucky they got the chance to get uh, God to fulfill what he had to do right in front of their face. Let's go back up to uh, verse 1, though. Let's look at how how Jesus used Old Testament scriptures to fight Satan. Now, this is an example of what we could do to this day. So how are we going to do it with the Old Testament? Go ahead. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. returned from Jordan uh -huh. and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Go ahead. Being forty days tempted of the devil, uh -huh. and in those days he did eat nothing. Uh -huh. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Mm -hmm. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. So here comes Satan. He trying to tempt Jesus. Now let's see what Jesus did. Because Jesus, let's see, let's see what Jesus go on read verse four. What does Jesus say? And Jesus answered them and saying, mm -hmm. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word of God. So Jesus hit him with some scriptures. Jesus fought Satan with scripture. What scripture? Old Testament scriptures. It says, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Let's see where Jesus got that from. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Jesus was hitting them with Old Testament scriptures. He hit them with Old Testament scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 1. And when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. All the commandments which I command thee this day uh -huh. shall ye observe to do. So we're talking to Israel, but go ahead. That ye may live and multiply mm -hmm. and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led these 40 years at the wilderness to humble thee. That's right. So we're so, so, so just talking about uh, how the Lord led Israel in the wilderness to humble them. But go ahead. And to prove thee, uh -huh. to know what was in thine heart, uh -huh. whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Go ahead. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger mm -hmm. and fed thee with manna. Go ahead. Thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know. That he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, uh -huh. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the, the Lord doth man live. And 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 that is exactly what Jesus said to fight Satan with. So Jesus was using the Old Testament to fight Satan. Let's go back to Luke chapter four. We're gonna be flipping back and forth for a few for a little while. So we go from the law to the testimony. Right? Just like the Bible says, search the scriptures. And we go from the law to back to the testimony. Now let's go back to the testimony. Uh, Luke chapter 4. Because the New Testament is a testimony of the Old Testament. And that's why we can't do away with it. Luke chapter 4 and uh, verse 8. Wait a minute. 5. 5. Verse 5, when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, uh -huh. showed him to, uh, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Uh -huh. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, mm -hmm. and the glory of them. 
for that is delivered unto me, mm -hmm. and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore would worship me, and shall be thine, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Boy, so, so Satan is, is Jesus to worship him. Now let's see what Jesus had to say about that. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, say for what? For it is written, uh -huh. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, uh -huh. and him only shalt thou serve. It says, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. It is written. Where is it written at? It is written. He's talking about it was written somewhere else in the Bible. In the Old Testament. For it is written. It says, For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Let's see where Jesus got that from. Do, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. <clears throat> Jesus is quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 13. And when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God uh -huh. and serve him uh -huh. and shalt swear by his name. So thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and thou shalt swear here by his name. So Jesus is fighting Satan with Old Testament scriptures. So how can we do away with the Old Testament? When we see Jesus is using them. It's power in the Old Testament scriptures. They got to be. Because you see Jesus using them. So why can't we use them? How can we listen to a man just a flesh and blood man tell me that I that I that I that I can't uh, that I have to do away with the Old Testament. When we see Jesus, the our example, the one who died for us, is using these scriptures. So uh, <clears throat> let's go back to Luke chapter four. Let's finish this off. Luke chapter four, and we are at verse nine. When well, you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. And he brought him to Jerusalem uh -huh. and set him on a pinnacle of the temple uh -huh. and said unto him, If thou be the son of God, uh -huh. cast thyself down from hence. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, 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 so Satan's still trying to, you know. No, 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 no. Keep, keep, keep reading. Okay. Ten. For it is written. Oh, so you see Satan. Satan done got clever. So Satan even trying to hit Jesus with some scriptures. Satan say, for it is written. For it is written what? He shall give his angels charge over thee to uh -huh. keep thee. Uh-huh. So Satan, so that let, that let us know that Satan does know scriptures too. Satan know the Bible too. Go ahead. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Uh-huh. So... I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. Lest any at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. So now let's see what Satan what, what Satan quoting. Satan quoting from the Psalms. Satan's reading David. Psalms chapter 91. I'm just, I'm just going back and forth from New Testament to Old Testament, showing you that you can't do away with the Old Testament because they go hand in hand. It's just a testimony of the Old Testament. That's all it is. You can't do away with it. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. And, uh, uh oh, I went too far. And verse 11. Let me, let me get the, uh, Psalms chapter 91. And verse 11, and when you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Now, this is what uh, Satan was quoting. Go ahead. For he, excuse me, for he shall give his angel charge over thee. Oh, and then that's what, what's, uh, what Satan quoting. Go ahead. To keep thee in all thy ways. Uh-huh. They shall bear thee up in their hands, mm -hmm. lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So Satan got a little slick. Say we'll get slick with Jesus. Now let's go back to Luke chapter 4. Let's finish this, this, this off. Luke chapter 4 and verse uh, 12. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. So Je Jesus hit him back with another scripture, though. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto him, uh -huh. It is said. Uh huh. It is said. It, it is said in the Old Testament. Go ahead. Thou shalt not tempt. The Lord thy God. Now let's see where Jesus got that from. 
Because Jesus, again, is quoting scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 6. That's what he's quoting. He's quoting from the law. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse uh, 16. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And that, that what Jesus said? Go ahead. As he, as he tempted him in Massa. That's right. So the point is, I'm just showing you that you know, you can't do away with the Old Testament, especially if we see Jesus is using these scriptures. If Jesus uses them, I'm going to use them. Let's go to Psalms chapter 69. Like I said, it's just a very simple lesson. There's nothing too, 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 uh, too hard on the brain. You know, we just, we're just going through the Bible and searching the scriptures. That's all we're doing. But like Jesus said, search the scripture, they testify of me. And we testify to Jesus. That's all we're doing. Uh, Psalms chapter 69. And uh, and let's understand who, who's doing the talking in this in this Psalms right here, too. Understand this is Jesus speaking through the mouth of David, right? Psalms, Psalm 69 and verse 1. I'm sorry. Psalm 69 and verse 4. The mouth of David. This ain't David talking. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. They that hate me without a cause go ahead. are more than the hairs of mine head. So Jesus is speaking through the mouth of David. He's saying, They that hated me, hate me without a cause, are more than the hairs of my head. They what? They that would destroy me, uh -huh. being mine enemies, uh -huh. awfully uh -huh. mighty. So 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 basically, you know, hey, look, let's let's see what Jesus got that from. Let's Okay, so this is in the law. Now let's go to the testimony and see what this is written at. You got to finish this up, bro. Oh, go ahead, my brother. Then I restored that which I took not away. That's right. Because it wasn't his fault that he was, you know, crucified. He had to die for the sin. Man, because Adam sinned. But the, let's go to John 15. <clears throat> let's see what this is written at. And it shows you, this is how you can see that the Bible is airtight. Because Jesus said he was hated without a cause. Now let's see where this is written at. <clears throat> John chapter 15. John 15 and 25. And when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, that is written in their law. Written what? The law, which is, which is in Psalms, right? But go ahead. They hated me with all they calls. So, so you see how they coincide with each other? It says, uh, but this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled in their law. They hated me without a cause. Mm -hmm. Just showing you that, you know, hey, look, you won't even know who they talk about if you want to read the Old Testament. You got to read the Old Testament. You can't do away with it. Let's go to uh, John. Uh, let's go to uh, verse twenty-three. Go ahead, because uh, he say uh, you can't you can't love one and hate the other. And let's see where you know. Let's get some uh, cl uh, clarity on that. Go ahead, uh, verse twenty-three. He that hated me hated my father also. Okay, now let's see where that's written at Jeremiah chapter seventeen. Let's go back to the law. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 13. And when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. Oh, Lord, uh -huh. the hope of Israel. So this is still Jesus talking through the mouth of Jeremiah. He said, oh, Lord. Go ahead. He's talking to the Father, but go ahead. All that forsake thee uh -huh. shall be ashamed. So, so let's make some understanding. It says, O oh Lord, Jesus talking to the Father, the whole of Israel, all that, all that forsake thee, which is Jesus, shall be ashamed. What else? And they that depart from me uh -huh. shall be written in the earth. So, and, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, which, which means shall be judged. Go ahead. Because they have forsaken the Lord, uh -huh. the fountain of living water. Which is eternal life. So basically what he's showing is, you know, 
If you hate one, you hate the other. You despise the other. And that's what that's showing in, in uh, John chapter 15. <clears throat> let's uh Let's go to Isaiah chapter seven. Let's look at uh, let's look at Jesus some more. This thing gonna be kind of kind of fast now. Cause you can look at the old. You can look at the first of all. You can look at the Old Testament, and you can see, you know, the birth of Jesus. You can see his crucifixion. And you can see his return. All without even touching the New Testament. That's why we can't do away with this Old Testament. That's all this class is about. Let you know you can do away with the Old Testament scriptures. Let's look at the birth of Jesus. Let's look at it in Isaiah. Because all this stuff is foretold. All this is, was foretold before the New Testament was even about. So how do you think the, the apostles knew what was written if they wasn't reading the, they, they wasn't reading New Testament scriptures? Go ahead, Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Uh -huh. Behold, a virgin shall conceive uh -huh. and bear a son uh -huh. and shall call his name Emmanuel. Right, so it says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Which is what? God, God with us, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about Jesus, but let's make sure. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. That's what they talk about in the Old Testament. This is this was foretold. This was already foretold in the Old Testament. How do you think Matthew knew? Because he read it in the Old Testament. We can't get do we we can't do away with it. Uh Matthew chapter 1 and bring it down to verse 23. Now, this is the New Testament. Go ahead. Behold, uh -huh. a virgin shall be with child. So, didn't we just read about that? Go ahead. And shall bring forth a son. And what? Call him what? And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which, which interpreted is what? Which being interpreted is God with us. So, we so now we see a correlation between old and new. How can we get rid of it? Let's look at a child born king. Let's look at a. Uh, Let's go back to Isaiah. Let's go back to the law. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and read. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm looking at this one. I ain't looking, looking over there. You ready? Yeah, go ahead and read it to it, my bro. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. So, we're talking about the birth of Jesus Christ, which was already foretold in the Old Testament book of Isaiah. When that his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, uh -huh. before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, uh -huh. was minded to put her away privately. Right, well, because she conceived, he hadn't, he hadn't laid with her yet. Go ahead. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, mm -hmm. for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now, oh, so we're talking about Jesus. That's who Emmanuel is. Right. That's who that is. But, we, but he was already foretold in the Old Testament. Now we in New Testament talking about it. It's testifying of the Old Testament. Because, again, like I said before, Testament is a testimony of the Old Testament scriptures. Go ahead and keep reading. For he shall save his people from their sins. Uh -huh. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, uh -huh. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. What was that? What did we read that at? In Isaiah. In, Isaiah. in the Old Testament. Go ahead. So that had to but go ahead. And shall bring forth his son, uh -huh. and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which is terrible. Well, again, again, interpreted is God with us, and that's Jesus, right? Who knows the correlation? It's simple. Let's go to Isaiah chapter nine. Let's go back to the Old Testament and see some more uh, uh, foretold uh, prophecy. Isaiah chapter nine. <clears throat> Uh, 
Isaiah chapter 9, and uh, we're going to hit it with verse uh, 6. And when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. For unto us a child is born, uh -huh. unto us a son is given. That's right. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Talking about a child that is born, and the government going to be on his shoulder. We're talking about a ruler. We're talking about a king. Go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Uh-huh. Counselor. That's right. The Mighty God. Uh-huh. The Everlasting Father. That's right. The Prince of Peace. And that's what, now, so we, so we have a child. That is born. It says, it says, uh, it says, for us, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We're talking about a child now. Let's see what we're talking about. Let's go to Michael, Michael chapter 5. Let's see some more attributes of this child. And then we're going to go to the New Testament and see what the child is. But I'm just showing you the correlation between Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, uh -huh. though, though thou be a little among the thousands of Judah, uh -huh. yet out of thee shall he come forth uh -huh. unto me that is to be ruler of in Israel. So we're talking about a ruler, go ahead. Whose goings forth have been from old. So from from old, from way back. It's going because it was already written. Go ahead. From everlasting. From everlasting, uh huh. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she's which surveillance has brought forth the Okay, that's it. Only. That that's it on that. But right. but I'm showing you this this is the same child it says it's showing you where he was born at. It says, But thou Bethlehem, Ephatah. Who was born in Bethlehem? Jesus. Thou shalt, I'm sorry, uh, though thou be a little among the thousands of Judah, yet come out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be a ruler in Israel. Now we're talking about a ruler whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting, because he's been the king of Israel. Let's go to uh, Matthew 2 and let's see who he's talking about. Now, let's go to the New Testament and verify who he's talking about. Matthew chapter 2. Because this is how Matthew knew. How could he know if he hadn't read it in the Old Testament? Matthew chapter 2 and uh, verse 1. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So, we saw that in Matthew chapter 5. We saw... Jesus born in Bethlehem in the Old Testament was already foretold. That's why we can't do away with the Old Testament because if you do away with the Old Testament, you're doing away with Jesus. Go ahead, my brother. Of Judea, uh -huh. in the days of Herod the king, mm -hmm. behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, uh -huh. saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Now we're talking about a king. Go ahead. For we have seen his star in the east mm -hmm. and are come to worship him. Mm -hmm. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, mm -hmm. and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, that's right. He demanded of them where Christ should be born. Uh huh. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. Again, we saw that in Michael chapter five. Already was foretold. They knew he was going to be born in Bethlehem. Go ahead. For thus it is written by the prophet. Oh, written by what prophet? Michael. Go ahead. And thou, brethren. I'm sorry. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah uh -huh. are not uh, the not the least among the princes of Judah. Uh -huh. For out of thee shall come a governor. Oh, then we read that in uh, uh Isaiah chapter nine. Go ahead. That shall rule by people Israel. So I'm just showing. See, we just read that in the Old Testament already. We read that he was going to be counselor, the everlasting Father. He gonna have the government on his shoulder. That was already foretold. We just, you know, like I say, it's, it's a simple class. We're just going back and forth. You can't do it or do away with the Old Testament. Let's look at the crucifixion. Let's go to Psalms chapter 22. Psalms chapter 22. Just like to just keep it simple sometimes. We ain't always got to get, dig deep in some meat. Some, in this room, we understand that we can't do away with the Old Testament. But there's people like that being taught that we can do away with it. So we just, you know, it's our job to just show you that, hey, look. You can't do away with that because you don't want to do away with Jesus. 
The one where you say you love. <laughs> Follow. Psalms chapter 22. Psalms chapter 22 and uh, verse. Let me get that real quick. I'm about page sticking today, man. Psalms chapter 22 and verse 1. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. My God. Uh huh. My God. Go ahead. Why has thou forsaken me? Now, now, this was already foretold. But go ahead. Why art thou so far from helping me uh -huh. and from the words of my roaring? Bring it down to verse, verse 7. Now, we're talking about you. This is Christ. Is it, he, he's in pain. Go ahead. Uh, verse 7. Go ahead. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. Uh -huh. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, uh -huh. He trusted of the Lord that would, would that he would deliver him. Uh -huh. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Go ahead. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. He is on the cross right now. Go ahead. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Mm -hmm. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Go ahead. Go ahead. Be not far from me. For trouble is near, mm -hmm. but there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. Set me uh -huh. around. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. Uh -huh. I am poured out like water, and, my... and all my bones are out of joint. So he's in pain. Go ahead. My heart is like wax. Uh -huh. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Mm -hmm. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, mm -hmm. and my tongue cleaving to my jaw. So, so the Lord is just saying, He's in. And this was in the Old Testament and already was foretold. But go ahead, keep reading, my brother. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. Uh huh. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Uh -huh. They pierced my hands and my feet. Oh, they pierced my hands and my feet. So, so, so who was pierced? We're talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Talking about Jesus. Go ahead. I may tell all my bones. They. Look and stare upon them. Verse 18, go ahead. They part my garments among them. So they, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. And cast lots upon my so, so, but, the, but beat, or so, so, uh, they part, now remember this, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Let's see where that stuff is written at. Let's go to Matthew chapter 27 to the actual crucifixion. This was already foretold in the Old Testament. That's what I'm saying. You don't even have to turn to the New Testament to get understanding on this stuff. It's already written. Now let's get the testimony of this. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27 and, and verse 35. And when you get it, my brother, uh, go ahead and read it. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Uh -huh. They parted my garments among them upon my vesture. And they did what? Did they cast lots? And then we just read that in uh, Psalm 22? Yes, but go ahead, my brother. Wait, wait, wait. Well, no, jump, jump, jump down to 40, 46. Yeah. And about the ninth hour, uh -huh. Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, What did he say? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Uh -huh. That is to say, my God. My God, why hast thou forsaken me? So we see that in the Old Testament already in Psalm 22. Mm -hmm. So we don't really, really, really need the old, need the New Testament, because we see it in the Old Testament already foretold. Now let's look at the return of the Lord, because you can see the return of the Lord in the Old Testament also. Let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 34. Now this is the return of the Lord. This is at the end of the world, the return of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 34. The Lord showed the, the secrets to his servants, the prophets. And that's what we read. And so we read now the prophets, the way he showed his secrets to. And that's how the apostles knew, because they read it from the prophets. Isaiah chapter 34 and uh, <clears throat> verse 1. Brother, go ahead and read it. Come near, ye nations, uh -huh. to hear and yeah. hearken, mm -hmm. ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein. So the Lord is telling everybody, let's, hey, look, I need all y'all to hear this. Go ahead. The world and all the things that come forth of uh -huh. for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. So did it say the love and the kindness of the Lord was upon all nations? Indignation. He didn't say that, did he? He said the indignation of the Lord 
the is upon all nations. He's talking about fury, but go ahead. And this fury upon all of their armies. Uh huh. He had utterly destroyed them. Uh huh. He had delivered them to the slaughter. So we're talking about the Lord doing some destroying when the Lord returned. But go ahead, my brother. Their slain all shall be shall be cast out. Uh huh. And their stink shall come up. And what? Their carcasses. Uh huh. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. So whoever whoever read that. Their, their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. But go ahead. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Uh huh. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. So, Lord, when he returns, he gonna roll the heavens back like a scroll. Go ahead. And all their hosts shall fall down. Uh huh. As the leaf falleth off from the vine. Uh huh. And as they fall in fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. So we're talking about the Lord's sword. We ain't talking about Isaiah's sword. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. It shall come down on who? Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia uh -huh. and upon the people of my curse. And we already know who Idumia is. The 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 the, the uh the, the the you know the fake Jews, right? <laughs> but go ahead. To judgment. Uh -huh. The sword of the Lord is for. It's filled with blood. Uh -huh. It is made. Oh, wait, so the sword of the Lord is filled with what? Blood. So the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Go ahead. It is made fat with fatness. Uh -huh. And with the blood of lambs and goats, with the far of the the kidneys of rams. Uh -huh. For the Lord has a, a sacrifice in Bozrah. So uh, go ahead. and a great slaughter in the land of Adamea. So we just show I'm just showing you, you know, hey, look, this was already foretold already, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go look at let's go look at it. At uh, Revelation chapter 6 of the New Testament. Let's go to, all the way to Revelation chapter 6. And we're just going to make a correlation between what we just read. <clears throat> the Lord said that heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. Where, where, where else is that written at? See, the New Testament is just confirmation. It just confirms what the Old Testament is saying. It's, 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 it's just a testimony. Go ahead, my brother. Uh, this is at the end of the world, the return of the Lord. Uh, Revelation chapter 6, when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. So the sixth seal of the world. Go ahead, my brother. And lo, there was a great earthquake. Uh huh. And the sun became black as cyclops. Go ahead. And the moon became his blood. Uh huh. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth. Mm -hmm. Even as a fig tree cast her untimely fig. Go ahead. And when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Mm -hmm. And the heaven departed as a scroll. Oh, the heaven departed as a scroll. Where did we just read that at? In the in the book of Isaiah, chapter 34. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is how you know the Bible is airtight. Tight. Can't nobody can have concocted and and, and 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 try to change nothing. This is the word of God. But go ahead, my brother. When it is rolled together, uh -huh. and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, uh -huh. and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, uh -huh. and the mighty men, go ahead. and every bondman, so those rulers of the world, go ahead. and every free man, uh -huh. hid themselves in the den, and did the rocks of the mountains, uh -huh. and said to the mountains and rocks, Follow on us. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, uh -huh. and from the wrath of the Lamb. And from the wrath of the Lamb, from the wrath of, of Jesus, the Lamb with the wrath. May read it. May read. May just keep reading. For, for that great, for the great day of his wrath is come. Uh huh. And who shall be able to stand? And who gonna be able to stand? That I'm just showing you that. Hey, look, it's correlation between the Old and New Testament scriptures. You know, we and we see that, and this can go on for hours. To be honest with you, I, I and mean, we could we could finish the rest of the day off, wake up, get back to it, and do it all day tomorrow. As far as the correlations is concerned, in the Old and New Testament, man, let's go to Isaiah sixty six. Also, some some future prophecy that's in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter sixty six. We're going to hit it with uh, verse 15. Some more Old Testament prophecy. That's all. You can't do away with this Old Testament. You can't. You need it. It's in, the, it's in the Bible for a reason. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. For I behold, the Lord will come with fire. So, Fire. 
Go ahead, my brother. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Angels. Go ahead. To run to his anger with fury. He gonna be mad. Go ahead. And his rebuke with flames of fire. And he continue with fire, fire, and fire. Go ahead. For by fire and his and by his war uh -huh. will the Lord plead with all flesh. And so this ain't gonna the, the, the Lord ain't gonna be on his hands and knees pleading. It said, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And we just read that his sword was bathed in heaven. But go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be men. And that's what he's going to do with his sword when he come back. He's going to do some killing. Mm -hmm. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So whoever read that in the Bible? Hmm. <laughs> but my brother keep reading. They that sanctify themselves uh -huh. and purify themselves. Now we're talking about those people that, hey, they want to, you know, I'm so holy, I'm so holy, I'm, I'm sanctifying myself, I'm purifying myself, doing what? In the guards behind one tree in the midst. So they have behind Satan. Matter of fact, let's just start right here real quick. Let's let's prove that with the Old Testament, this tree in the midst. Let's see what this tree in the midst is. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 while it's on my mind. Behind Satan, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves behind one tree in the midst. Let's go see who this tree. In the, let's go see who these church people that want to sanctify themselves and who they hide behind. Let's go uh, Genesis chapter three. When you get it, my brother, verse one. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field uh -huh. which the Lord God had made. So said so now the serpent was more subtle than than any beast of the field. Which the Lord God has made. Tell me about the serpent. Go ahead. And he said it to the woman. Uh huh. Yeah. Hath God said, You should not eat of every tree of the garden? Uh huh. So not in the garden. Go ahead. And the woman said unto, unto the serpent, Uh huh. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Go ahead. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Oh, this tree in the midst. You should what? God has said, You should not eat of it. It says, But of the, tr but of the fruit. Of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God has said, "You shall not eat of it, neither what? Neither you shall you touch it, uh -huh. lest she die." Well, what the serpent said? And the serpent said unto the woman, "You shall not surely die." So this is Satan. Satan is in the midst of the is in the midst of the garden. This Satan is the is the tree that's in the midst. Now let's go back to. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66 and read this verse over again so now we understand who you know the so called people that sanctify themselves and purify themselves who they listen to and hide behind let's bring it up to uh, uh, verse 17 when you go ahead and, when you get it my brother go ahead and read it they, Isaiah, Isaiah 66 and 17 go ahead they that sanctify themselves uh -huh. and purify themselves behind who? and the guard is behind one tree in the midst which we understand that's Satan so they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves behind Satan. Go ahead. Eating swine's flesh. Eating pigs. Pork chop, pig tail, hog maw, chitlin. Uh, you know what they like. Go ahead, my brother. And the abomination. And the abomination, which is shrimp, crabs, rabbits, and, and, and lobsters and stuff like that. Go ahead. And the mouse. And the mouse. Because we see, hey, it's all over Facebook. You see folk eating my, mice and bats and all that kind of stuff, right? Shall be consumed together. Says who? Say the Lord. So we see that they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gods behind one tree in the midst, eat swine's flesh, which is pork, and the abomination, which the you know you read dietary law in uh, Leviticus chapter eleven, the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. So when the Lord return and do his killing, he gonna kill those who's eating the abomination and the mouse. Also, you don't want to be that guy. Now let's look at, you know, I, I came here because I wanted to look at, show, show you in the New Testament that the Lord is coming with that fire though. Because, see, it's, you know, it tell you he came with fire in uh, uh, Isaiah 6, 6 and 15. So I, show, so I showed this to somebody and they told me this had already happened already. And I said, how did that happen? The Lord ain't came with fire yet. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Uh, chapter 1 2nd Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7 and when you get that my brother go ahead and read it and to you who are troubled rest with us uh -huh. when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angel and then we see that what's coming with his, with his, with his chariot, 
Mm-hmm. Isaiah 66, those were his angels he coming with. Go ahead. In flaming fire. And what? In flaming fire. And flaming fire, just like we read in Isaiah 66. That's how we know this is Jesus. Go ahead. Taking vengeance on them that know not God. And what else? And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And where the gospel at? The Old Testament scriptures. The Lord is coming to take vengeance on them that know not God. And what? And I test. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It says, in flame and fire, taking vengeance uh, on them that know not God and, and, not, and, and that not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction uh-huh. from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So you will be destroyed. But so but but the the bottom line is what I'm showing is listen, the old and new testament, they go hand in hand, they correlate with each other. Uh all throughout the Bible, you know, all these things were foretold. So that being said, I hope somebody got some understanding in Jesus' name. Peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, we got some announcements uh, by my brother. Our prayer <laughs> is that the eyes of our understanding, I'm sorry, the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of the lesson are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donations and pick up your DVD CD up at the podium next Saturday. Please tune into the Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Also, join us for question and answer Bible study in about an hour from now, and every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via live stream and or teleconference at 860-970-0010, access code 343-531-334, pound. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, Please sign the baptismal list at the podium or speak with Brother Tony or Brother Anthony. On the first Sunday of every month, we broadcast the Bible in plain view. This broadcast gives brothers an opportunity to read and or teach short 30-minute class. If you are interested in helping, please let us know. The following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight, fiddly, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing shall be worn. Men are to remove hats and all the head covering, and women should wear a head, head covering, such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 through 7. If your young child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the other room next door. Any tithes in our free will offering should be put in an offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you until next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. We got any announcements any brother need to want to make? Hey, um, under that podium, calendars, new calendars came in. Okay. So, you guys can grab a calendar. Um, that ain't it. I don't know the exact count right now, but you should have been in that calendar. Maybe they are. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Those are the calendars. Um, you know, the calendars, they have some. Thank you. That's it. That's what's up. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and close out uh, and uh, stand to face Jerusalem. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. And the glory forever. Praise the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. 
Yeah. For he is good. For Good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. The one true God. The one true God. And there is no other. And there is no other. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen.